morning. Today is the seventh Sunday in ordinary time. Under the leadership of the Capuchin Franciscan Friars and in union with the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Philadelphia, St. John's welcomes all who are present with us today in praising God and serving God's people. Our second collection today will be for the Catholic Relief Services to assist those recovering from the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. This Wednesday, February 22nd, is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. Please check the bulletin or the website stjohnsphilly.org for the schedule of masses and the distribution of ashes. Uh, St. John's Church is supported solely by donations from parishioners and visitors. We get no subsidy, subsidy from the Archdiocese, and we ask that our visitors please be as generous as you can. Uh, today, uh, Annette, our uh, music director, is not with us, and unfortunately, the person going to take her place was involved in an automobile accident on the way here, so we will have no music today, and please say a prayer for the uh, musician. Celebrant for the Mass today is Father John. As we are about to begin Mass, please turn off or silence any electronic devices which may cause a distraction. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for singing. Uh, sometimes with, with the piano and the cantor, uh, it's hard to hear the congregation singing very much. I know you are, but, uh, but uh, today, at least, we could hear and, and hear each other, and that's a great good thing. It is uh, wonderful for you to be here with us. Uh, to, for us to be here all together, to worship the Lord, to hear his word, and to prepare our hearts to receive him. It is also great that we have uh, live streaming at this Mass, and we welcome those who cannot be with us personally, but who are with us electronically. As we prepare ourselves to worship, we call to mind our sins, and God's great mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, 
that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills, he redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If any one among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future, all belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Whoever keeps the word of Christ, 
the love of God is truly perfected in him. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it, it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you and do not turn your back on the one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your heavenly Father, for he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. This Sunday is obviously then the last Sunday before Lent. It's a curiosity of the liturgical season and the movable date of Easter that we seldom hear these particular readings in the Sunday lectionary. Most years in cycle A were already in Lent. St. Paul just told us the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. And then he adds, so let no one boast. We dare not boast, for we know that each of us personally and all of us together are imperfect. We know that the grace of God has been poured into us, that we're temples of the Holy Spirit, and that we have cooperated with the grace given to us, but not completely. We are here today, this is wonderful, praying together. And while the worldly world sleeps or does whatever it wants, goes to brunch, you and I and millions of other Christians assemble together this weekend in prayer and praise. When we do come together to worship, we are signs of contradiction to the world signs of contradiction to the wisdom of the world. We live lives, or at least should be living lives, that the world often doesn't understand. Sometimes we're praised by worldly people, sometimes we're condemned by them. Sometimes worldly people will think that we are somehow useful, or they will try to use us at other times, the world thinks we're irrelevant. And not a few people in the world think we are just nuts. But that doesn't matter. We're here together praying, glorifying God by our prayers, by our lives, by our thoughts, by our words, by our deeds. And yet we need to be careful. Paul warns us against boasting. Because we're all tempted, I think, to think, well, we're the good ones. We're the really good ones. We're the ones who 
uh, who know the truth and all those other people, yada, yada, yada. But if the test is what it was said to be in the scripture today, is to be holy as the Lord is holy, to be perfect as God is perfect, we know we fall far short, even on our best days with our best intentions. And so we try again and again to get it right. Try again and again to be faith-filled. Try again and again to be faithful. Try again and again to be servants of the Most High God. And that is challenging. The gospel life is challenging. This particular gospel today is challenging. Jesus says, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's in the Old Testament. That's in the Old Law. And Jesus calls us to be better than that to supersede that, to give up the idea of tit-for-tat recrimination. Instead, he calls us to, eat, to give up the old self, to give up the old ways, the adversary is always trying to bring us down by appealing to our pride to our practicality, to our need to defend every little thing that we have or want to have. And the gospel tells us, don't think the way men think. Instead, bring ourselves to think the way God thinks. And unless we try to do that, we will never succeed in doing that. Unless we start, we'll never get nearer the finish line. And so, we're called by the Lord to take our lives seriously, to take our lives into our own hands, and to move ourselves closer to him. In three days' time, we're going to begin our Lent, a time of prayer and fasting and almsgiving. Lent is a time of taking stock, of renewing, of seeing how the seeds of faith that were planted within us are doing. Have we nurtured those seeds of faith or not? Or did we once nurture them and then just went coasting along thinking that we were just good enough? I urge you, to enter Lent with a plan. And for God's sake and the sake of your soul, don't automatically just give up chocolate. Do not automatically celebrate and observe Lent the way you always have. And certainly don't do it the way that you did when you were in fifth grade. We're not in fifth grade. God is with us now, here, together and individually, as we are today, not as we were last year, or 10 years ago, or 50 years ago. You're in a different place in your life. Discern what God wants you to do this Lent. Pray about it. Self-denial is certainly important, but doing something more actively is even more important. Let me suggest a Lenten program. For the last three weeks on the Sunday Masses, we have heard just a portion of the Sermon on the Mount. Let me suggest that a Lenten practice this year may be to do a daily slow, only a couple of verses a day, careful reading of the Sermon on the Mount. Just read a couple of verses a day and then think about them. Before you start each day, ask the Spirit to help you understand the portion of the day and its meaning for your life. And then read those verses 
just a couple of verses, once and then twice. And then stop to reflect on the message God has for you in your life today. And after your time of reflection is over, read the verses one final time and thank God for the privilege of spending the time with him. It doesn't have to be a long exercise, but if it's done consistently, if it's done consistently, we will be different people when Easter comes. The Sermon on the Mount is easy to find. It is in Matthew's Gospel, chapters 5, 6, and 7. Let this exercise beckon us forward to the time when we will be more fully with God more fully the person God has created us to be. With devotion, meekness, humility, and willing to suffer for the sake of righteousness. The Sermon on the Mount and the whole season of Lent calls us to radical discipleship, not just ordinary discipleship. It calls us to abandon the wisdom of the world to restrain our desires and passions in order that we might embrace our call to be salt and light, to becoming mirrors of Christ in the world, to becoming peace embracers, enemy forgivers, lovers of oppressors. and radically commit ourselves. If we work that program, if we do the prayer and soul searching and the reflecting by Easter, we'll be further along the road we want to go. Praise God. But if we just give up candy and think that's the best we can do, well, at Easter, will we be any different? Maybe a couple of pounds lighter. But that's not the goal of Lent. Let us profess the faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord tells us that we are to love those who injure us, We need God's help to do so, to reach out to all the world in our prayers. And so we lift up our voices. That priests and deacons will preach effectively the radical message of Jesus about love of enemies, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. That nations end their feuds against other nations and live together in peace. We continue to pay, pray for peace in Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those addicted to drugs, 
alcohol, and other harmful things will find freedom and healing from Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those accused of crime and who are awaiting trial will find justice and mercy, and that their hearts will be moved to seek forgiveness and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died will find forgiveness and peace in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the benefactors of St. John's Church, for the intentions in our book of prayer, and for those intentions that each of us now offers in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, Jesus taught us in the Sermon on the Mount to love even our enemies. Help us to love others in your name, that we may be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. And blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O, God, o Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who reign, live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be saved.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. So thank you for coming. Uh, it is good always for us to be here. Uh, if you're visiting the city, know you're always welcome here at St. John's. Ash Wednesday schedule is in the bulletin. There are bulletins on either side of the main door and also on our parish website, stjohnsphilly.org. It is uh, a busy day here on Ash Wednesday, uh, but we'd like you to be busy. There are masses scheduled throughout the day, four of them. There are uh, here in the upper church. There are a few short penitential services downstairs with the distribution of ashes, basically every 15 minutes. Um, and everybody is, of course, welcome. You know, the people who write books on Catholic liturgy are always saying, we need more silence at Mass. And the parish priests are saying, not so sure about that, but um, you can make your own judgment. Uh, you did have a little bit more time to recollect your own thoughts today than you might otherwise do uh, in a mass where our human understanding is very active and very accomplished. And Amos had been expecting that today. Well, so did I. Um, found out about five minutes before mass on that which is not. Uh, as we end, uh, I would just say that I am leaving a pilgrimage in early May to Italy. The pilgrimage has a Franciscan theme. There are some brochures in the back of the church. It is also, at, the brochures are accessible on our website, stjohnsphilly.org. As we recess, I would ask that we sing the last two verses of the hymn we sang coming in. And that is number 197. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go announce the gospel by your lives. <laughs>